LP Alchemy. In this class, uh, you're gonna learn about one of the iron losses that is hysteresis losses. We all we uh, know that uh, the losses occurring in an electrical machine are divided into iron and copper losses. The copper losses are I square R losses, whereas the iron losses constitute of two types that is one is hysteresis losses and the second one is eddy current losses. The eddy current losses will be discussed in a separate video. So this in this video, I will uh, teach you about the hysteresis losses. Are you really bored about the routine explanation of the hysteresis loss with the BH curve? Yes, I was too. But when I came across this kind of explanation, it totally changed my view about the hysteresis loss. It's damn simple and very easy to understand. Uh, so um, since the hysteresis loss is a magnetic uh, loss, you need to know about few magnetic properties of the material. Okay, so um, let us learn about it one by one. And let me start with magnetic dipole. Okay, what is magnetic dipole? You might have already learned, uh, listened about electrical dipole. Yes, this is just analogous to that electrical dipole. What is this? It's just a flux carrier. Yes, just because of this magnetic dipoles, the magnetic flux is produced in a material. Okay, so suppose if you consider a material, it has uh, different, uh, it has many dipoles like this aligned in a different manner they are very irregularly distributed and there is no specific orientation for these magnetic dipoles and like what each one is aligned in a different direction okay like this when there is no field applied across the magnetic material okay now uh, the second term we need to learn is magnetization okay so whenever mmf is applied to a magnetic uh, magnetic material all these domains present in the magnetic material are aligned in the electrical field direction suppose if this is magnetized i am applying some magnetic field h then all these magnetic dipoles will be aligned in one direction and that direction is the direction of electrical field okay so um, you can observe that in this the domains the dipoles are arranged in a irregular fashion but here these are aligned in a specific manner so which is increasing the width of the magnetic material okay so so this tendency to change the dimensions of a uh, magnetic material whenever it is subjected to magnetic field is called magnetostriction so when a ferromagnetic uh, monocrystal when it is placed in a magnetic field it is liable to shrink or expand there is small extension with corresponding reduction of the cross section of the crystals when subjected to rapidly alternating magnetic fields so there is rapid and continuous extension and contraction of the materials and this is called the magnetostriction and this is a major cause of hum in transformers and fluorescent chokes okay like here when it is it is uh, when there is no field it is like this and when uh, when we are applying some field it, the width changes again when it is demagnetized again it will shrink again when demagnetized it will expand so it, in each cycle it will continuously expand and expand and shrink expand and shrink so this um, tendency to change the dimensions of a magnetic material is called magnetostriction okay and next thing is magnetic saturation okay when there are more number of domains available in the magnetic material it will be a magnetized at a faster rate when there are less number of domains it will magnetize at a slower rate like this it will start at a higher rate and it will decrease like this that is in the far in the beginning suppose if i'm applying field like this 
it will increase fastly and and when our, the domains are getting less it will stop decreasing okay so this is called a magnetic saturation okay and next demagnetization okay demagnetization so when i have applied h it is magnetized in this direction that is the domains are formed into a string so when i remove the field h then the domains in the string comes out of the string again it will the process from here to here is magnetization and the process from here to here is called demagnetization that is the domains will come from this manner to this manner okay that is called the demagnetization but due to another property called magnetic inertia that is even the edge is removed even the edge is removed the domains still try to remain in the string due to the magnetic inertia okay so another thing we need to uh, know is the rate of demagnetization is slower than magnetization okay that is that is due to the nature uh, due to the due to the reluctance of domains okay so this uh, again this one has another uh, property name called retentivity okay what is retentivity retentivity is a property to retain to retain its magnetic property even though this h is zero it still tries to retain the magnetic uh, flux in it so um, due to retentivity some uh, domains contribute to flux even h is equals to zero okay so the property of the magnetic material to retain the magnetic uh, property even h is equals to zero is called the retentivity so even when h is equals to zero there is some flux and this flux is called residual flux okay so residual flux is do uh, some domains still contribute to the flux even though h is equals to zero so this is called the residual flux you might have already learned about this okay and next thing is coercivity so in order to remove this residual flux from the material again some more h is to be applied in the reverse direction that is additionally so uh, this property of a magnetic material due to which additional h is need to be uh, applied across the magnetic material to remove the residual flux completely is called the co uh, coercivity property and that force is called coercive force okay coercive force again it is denoted by h okay so this coercive force is the main reason uh, this this coercive force is the additional nmf you need to apply across the magnetic material and it is wasted unnecessarily and this is causing the hysteresis loss okay so now i'll explain it in a, in a different way that is a standard way which everyone might have seen in your textbooks so suppose if i am if i have started uh, increasing the h from zero to some value the b also increases with the h but in a non-linear way and then again i try to decrease this h to zero this B does not follow the previous path, but it comes in a different way. And that is in this way, you can see that H is zero. Okay, H is zero, but B is having some value. So in order to make B zero, again, I need to reverse it in a different way. So again, I have to apply H in a reverse way. So this is HC, that is the coercive force, which is being wasted. Okay, if I further increase zero in a negative manner the b continues to increase in a negative day, negative direction okay now if if i can uh, try to decrease h from this value to this say this is h maximum okay if i start decreasing this hm to zero what happens is again there will be some 
b even though h is equals to 0 again in order to remove this b we need to apply in a reverse direction that is again in the reverse direction and it continues like this that is again there is a additional mmf we need to apply in order to remove this additional i mean like uh, to remove this residual flux thing okay so you can see that there is this much coercive force this this is too much so in order to reduce that stress loss this hc must be less so uh, we can see different types of uh, stress losses loops like this you can see see uh, the difference between these two loops is the area in the loop is less here than here so it means the hysteresis loss is less here and it is more here so in order to reduce the hysteresis losses you need to choose a material which is having a smaller area of individual hysteresis loop that is hysteresis loss per cycle is equals to area of one hysteresis loop that is total hysteresis loss is equals to area of one loop into frequency okay so if you observe one thing uh, the, due to the expansion and contraction expansion and contraction in each cycle there are two ex expansions and contractions so uh, this is the hysteresis loop explained this is uh, the reason of uh, this is the contribution contributor of the hysteresis loss so in order to minimize hysteresis loss as i said you need to choose a material with this kind of hysteresis loop so this is uh, achieved by using uh, high grade steels or silicon steels or crgo steels i'll be posting a separate video why we are using crgo steels for transformers and all uh, for now i'm ending up this video so i hope you are clear about all these things uh, and hysteresis losses yes uh, to say simply the, the definition of hysteresis loss due to the alternating nature of the flux magnetic core magnetized um, magnetic core undergoes reversals which results in power loss and these losses are called hysteresis losses okay it is given by a formula Steinmetz law what okay so this is the Steinmetz law where uh, Vm is the maximum flux density and uh, V is the volume of the material and F is the frequency of magnetization, okay? Okay, this is all about the hysteresis losses and if you have any doubts, just comment down in the comment section and if you like this video and feel it is useful,